J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with From Alpha to Omega. What is so rare as a day in June, cried the poet. Well, I know something. That's a June bride who can turn out a perfect home-cooked meal. But don't be downhearted. That new husband of yours will forgive you for an awful lot if you bring on a swell-looking, swell-tasting dessert. And that means Jell-O. There's no fuss or trouble with Jell-O. There's nothing to go wrong. Dissolves instantly in hot water, sets quickly in icebox or refrigerator, and comes out in a shimmering mold of beauty that looks and tastes like a million dollars. There are six delicious flavors, and every one is extra rich. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. They're simply swell, served just as is, or you can garnish them with any fruits in season. And Jell-O is one of the thriftiest desserts you can serve. Every husband appreciates that. So skip around to your grocer tomorrow and look for those big red letters on the box that spell Jell-O. That was From Alpha to Omega, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Hollywood. In just a moment, you will hear from your Hollywood reporter with his frank comments about motion pictures, radio, and their glamorous stars. A man who will startle you with his sensational scoops. And here he is, folks, that human dynamo, Jimmy Fiddler Benny. Hello again, this is Jimmy Benny, the Fiddler, coming to you from Hollywood. Hollywood, that small body of land entirely surrounded by racetracks. <laughs> and here we go with our news bulletin. Exclusive. Now that Robert Taylor and Barbara Stanwyck are married, and Tyrone Power has recently wed Annabella, who will be next? Gossips have it that Mae Robeson and Mickey Rooney have been seen dining and dancing together in the late night spot. <laughs> But take it from me, they are just good friends. <laughs> Attention, New York reporters. Eddie Cantor, comedian noted for his five daughters, is in your town celebrating his 25th wedding anniversary. On their way back to California, Eddie and his wife Ida will spend a week at Sun Valley. Watch this column. Watch this column for further developments. <laughs> Back to Hollywood. Movie star seen recently in Ruby Foo's Chinese restaurant ordering their specialty Egg Foo Young were Robert Young, Loretta Young, Roland Young, Victor Young, Clara Kimball Young, and Young Dr. Kildare. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, a special scoop. Hello, Jack. What are you doing? Quiet, Mary. More Hollywood news. Miss Ginger Fisdale, new child singing discovery, who is destined to become a great star, will be professionally known as Gin Fizz. She is three years old, and in her first screen effort, Bobby Breen will play the part of her father. <laughs> More Hollywood news. Oh, Jack, let me do one. All right. I have it on good authority that the Paramount Studio is planning to build Jack Benny's next picture around him. That's right. As soon as he is completely hidden, they will release it. <laughs> Quit making things up and give me that. Intimate notes for my little black book. Observed recently coming out of Maisie's fashionable beauty parlor in Beverly Hills were Joan Bennett, Myrna Loy, Carol Lombard, Hedy Lamar, and Phil Harris. <laughs> uh, when confronted, the popular band leader claimed he made a mistake. The sign said Maisie's Salon, but he thought it was Muzzy's Saloon. <laughs> And now a word from our sponsor. Take it, Don. Jello. Take it, Jack. Good. Open letter. <laughs> Open letter to Fred Allen. 
Dear Mr. Allen, I understand you are going off the air shortly for a well-deserved vacation in the rock-bound state of Maine. You've earned that vacation, Fred, and you need it. Boy, how you need it. <laughs> but before you go, Fred, may I give you this friendly bit of advice? Instead of coming back on the air next fall, get out those Indian clubs and that green wig and go back to Vaudeville. <laughs> Believe me, I'm speaking as your affectionate friend, Jimmy Fiddler Benny. Previews of the new picture. The first picture I recommend tonight is the Jones family in a gopher hole. <laughs> This is a two-bell picture. Now this three-bell picture <laughs> is good, clean fun for the entire family. The next picture I recommend is Charlie Chan in St. Paul or Mr. Moto in Minneapolis. <laughs> this mystery gets three and a half bells. The plot is fascinating. It is about three smart girls who grow up in Dodge City. And the high spot of the picture is when the Cisco kid falls off of Wuthering Heights. Oh, don't miss it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to recommend wholeheartedly, with no reservations whatsoever, Paramount's latest comedy triumph, Man About Town starring Jack Benny. I give this picture... <laughs> Don't miss this picture, folks. It has plenty on the bell. Take it, Mr. Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, do you remember that old proverb, a rolling stone gathers no moss? Well, if you want a tempting and delicious dessert, you moss get jello. Oh, uncle. So look for the big red letters on the box. Thank you, Don. Well, it's about all the news for tonight, folks. But before I go, I want to leave you with this thought. When you've reached the top of the ladder of success, don't forget your friends, and your relatives won't forget you. <laughs> So until we meet again, this is Jimmy Fiddler Benny saying good night to you, and I do mean yahoo! <laughs> Take it, Maestro. Hooray for Spinach, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And Phil, that was the best number you've done this season. You know, there wasn't one sour note in the whole thing. Not one. Some shock, eh, kid? You said it. Say, Phil, how'd you like my little takeoff on Jimmy Fiddler? I had some pretty hot news there, didn't I? Hot news, nothing. I haven't been to Maisie's beauty parlor in two weeks. You haven't? Why, Phil Harris, I saw you in there last Thursday getting a permanent wave. Oh, then I was right about that little item. Imagine a man sitting in a beauty parlor having his hair curled. Why don't you send yours over sometime? <laughs> Never mind my hair. Say, where's Kenny? I've got another big scoop that I've been saving, and I want everybody to hear it. Hey, Kenny. Here I am, Jack. I was up on the roof taking a sun bath. Oh, up on the roof, eh? Gee, I got a headache. Well, naturally, you stayed out in the hot sun too long. Well, it wasn't that. I fell down the elevator shaft. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. 
Why don't you look where you're going? Gee whiz, Jack, it was the funniest feeling. What do you mean? I stepped in and said, main floor, please, and I got it right in the kisser. <laughs> For heaven's sake, watch yourself from now on. What's all the news you're going to tell us, Jack? Oh, yes. Now, listen carefully, everybody, and this is on the level. You know, two weeks from tonight, we do our last broadcast of the season. And we're going to do it from Waukegan, Illinois. Waukegan? Oh, Oh, boy. boy. Yes, sir. And the same night, we're going to have the world premiere of uh, Man About Town. No kidding, Jack. Are we really going to walk in? Yep. Two weeks from today, we'll be in my little hometown. Boy, what a hot time we'll have. We'll have to have it before 9 (laughs) p.m. Phil, they've abolished that curfew. There's plenty of excitement there now. Well, I was there last summer, and they rang that bell right on the stroke of nine. That wasn't a bell. They were kicking the gong around. (laughs) They'll show you a thing or two, brother. Well, I'm wide open, sister. Don't worry, Phil. You'll be able to keep those bags under your eyes. You won't lose them. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Gee, if we're going to Waukegan, I gotta get some new clothes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I announced last week... Me too! As I announced last week, tonight, the Benny Two Tickets for the Price of One Players (laughs) will present their version of the... I need a new evening gown. ...will present their version of Daryl F. Zanuck's... I need some white flannels. ...of Daryl F. Zanuck's thrilling white flannels. Or murder (laughs) mystery. Will you kids be quiet? We got a whole week to get ready. Uh, their murder mystery, The Hound of the Baskervilles. Now, in this gripping drama... I need a new grip, too. Kenny. <laughs> I will play the part of Sherlock Holmes, the internationally famous detective. Kenny Baker will be my assistant, Dr. Watson. And Andy Devine, where's Andy? Here I am, Bob! Gee, he came in like China across the bay, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> now, Andy, you'll play the part of the vicious, snarling, murderous hound. Do you think you can do it? <laughs> Perfect. Now, this play will go on. Say, Buck, am I going to walk Keegan with you? You certainly are, Andy. Then I better put my shoes on. Yeah, you'll never regret it. You'll have the time of your life. Now, our play will go on immediately after. I'll take it. Hello? Who? Plainfield, New Jersey? That must be for you, Mary. Oh, gee, I'll bet it's Mama. Yes, Tugboat Annie is on the wire. (laughs) (laughs) Hello? Oh, hello, Mama. Gee, this is a surprise. What? You've been listening to the program? How is it? Oh, it does? She should be so critical. What, Mama? She was thrown out of the floor door of Sextet for wearing red bloomers. <laughs> yes, we're going to Waukegan. It's Jack's hometown. Yes, he was born there right above a clothing store. <laughs> oh, Mama, are you corny? What'd she say? Suits and clucks. Hmm. That's about her speed. <laughs> well, look, Mama, I got a great idea. Why don't you and Papa come to visit me in Waukegan? We can spend a few days together and you can see Jack's new picture. Oh, I don't know. I'll find out. Say, Jack, are they going? No, certainly not. No, Mama, no free dishes. (laughs) Tell her to stay home, Mary. I'll be busy enough that week. Well, I gotta hang up now. I'll write you later. Goodbye, Mama. Goodbye. Oh, Jack, hasn't Mama got the most wonderful sense of humor? Oh, she's a gem. (laughs) Now, where were we? Oh, yes, our play, The Hound of the Baskervilles, will go on right after Kenny Baker's song. Go ahead, Kenny. Okay. Say, Jack. What? Do you know any dames in Waukegan? I certainly do. Are they good looking? They certainly are. Can you get me a date with one of them? He certainly can't. (laughs) Don't worry now, Kenny. You'll be all fixed up. Go ahead with your song. (laughs) All right, Andy. Excuse me, fellas. I got to take Andy out for a walk. (laughs) Sing the angels sing the song. 
sweetest song I ever heard. You speak and the angels sing, or am I breathing music into every word? Suddenly the setting is strange, I can see water and moonlight be Silver waves that break on some undiscovered shore. Suddenly I see it all change. Long winter nights with the candles gleaming. Through it all your face that I adore. You smile and the angels sing. And it's just a gentle murmur at the start. We kiss and the angels sing and leave their music ringing. That was And the Angel Sing, sung by Kenny Baker, the little devil of the Jell-O program. And now for our feature attraction, that thrilling detective mystery, The Hound of the Baskervilles, or The Mayor of Van Nuys. <laughs> Say, Andy, I think you ought to try that howl just once more. It's very important to our plot. Okay. <laughs> very good. Now, the opening scene of our play is the residence of Sherlock Holmes in London, England. As the curtain rises, we find Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson in the library. Curtain. Music. <laughs> Excuse me, Watson. Hello? Sherlock Holmes on this end. Are you on your end? <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, it's you, Lord Trickletot. What, your son has run away with a chorus girl? Well, why worry about it? Oh, you saw her first. <laughs> Very well, I'll get on the trail immediately. Toodle-doo. His son is always up to something or other. Dr. Watson. Watson, what are you doing there? I'm looking over the mail. Anything important? I'll say you got a postcard from Paris. Well, put down that magnifying glass and give it to me. <laughs> okay. I say, this is from Fifi, the little dancer I met at the Follies Bergere. She says, Dear Sherlock, Qu'est-ce qui sait, voulez-vous, venez elle de quoi, très show. What does that mean? Long time, no see. <laughs> I think I'll run over to Paris and visit her. But what about your work here, Sherlock? After all, you're a detective. Well, I got a cherche la femme, don't I? I tell you, Watson is so dull around here. The cases I've been getting lately are ridiculously simple. They're not baffling enough. There's no excitement. <coughs> what was that? It's 12.30. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, Watson, if there isn't... <laughs> if there isn't any more action around here, I'm going to take a vacation. Hmm, there's someone at the door. I wonder who it is, Sherlock? It's a young lady about 23 years of age with beautiful blonde hair, blue eyes, and a divine figure. Why, that's amazing. How do you know? Well, to tell the truth, Watson, I'm just hoping. <laughs> Come in. Hello. Oh, shucks, it's Mary. Quiet, Watson. <laughs> How do you do, madam? How do you do? Oh, Mr. Holmes, you must help me. You must, you must. What seems to be the trouble, young lady? Well, you see, Mr. Holmes, I'm engaged to Philip Baskerville, the son of Sir Hugo Baskerville. Oh, Sir Hugo, I know him well. He's quite a lively old boy. Well, he's calmed down considerably. He was murdered last night. <laughs> well, that'll do it every time. <laughs> now, are you sure Sir Hugo is dead? I'm positive. How do you know? He doesn't giggle when we dust him off. <laughs> Is 
and he is dead. Uh, continue, my dear. Well, according to the legend of the Baskervilles, Sir Philip, my fiancé, is the next one marked for death. Amazing. The first Baskerville was killed. So was the second. Then the third and the fourth. I see. And Sir Philip is next? Yes. When they get him, it's bingo. <laughs> Hmm, it's a very interesting case. Now tell me, Miss... Uh, Lady Barrow. Lady Barrow. Is there any clue to these murders? Only one. Before each death, we always hear the howling of a dog on the lonely moor outside the castle. Oh, it's ghastly. Oh, a dog, eh? Then we have a clue already. Lady Barrow, I'll be glad to take the case. My fee, of course, will be $1,000. You won't get it, of course. Of course. <laughs> Make a note of that, Watson. Okay. No sale. <laughs> Uh, you may go now, Lady Beryl. Dr. Watson and I will follow immediately. Thank you. Oh, tell me. I've never been to Baskerville Castle. How will I find it? Very drafty. Goodbye. Hmm. Well, at last, Watson, we've got a case worthy of my merits. Let's hurry. We haven't a moment to lose. <laughs> Scene two. Three hours later, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson have just crossed the dark and desolate moor and are approaching Baskerville Castle. Mm. Mm, what a night. Dr. Watson. Dr. Watson, is that you behind me? Yeah. Stick close to me. Gee, I can't see a thing. It sure is dark tonight. I'll say it's dark. I just saw an owl with a lantern. <laughs> Look, Watson, do you see that light up ahead? Yes, that must be the place. I'm positive. Let's hurry. <laughs> this is the castle, all right. Look at that coat of arms on the door. It says Baskerville Hall, in hoax signum, multum paro. What does that mean? No cover charge. <laughs> If this is the Wilshire Bowl, I'll kill myself. <laughs> Ring the bell, Watson. Okay. Hmm, cheerful little spot. How do you do, gentlemen? Is this uh, Baskerville Castle? Yes. Whom shall I say is calling? <laughs> Uh, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. <laughs> Smarty. Gee, I wish I could do that. You fall down that elevator shaft a couple of more times and you'll be all set. Where's Lady Barrow? Follow me, gentlemen. Lady Barrow, the detectives have arrived. Thank you, Butch. You may go. I'll go. I'll go, but watch your step, Mr. Holmes. You may be next. Now, Lady Barrow... Wait a minute. I'm not through. <laughs> Silly boy. <laughs> now, Lady Barrow, I want to meet your guests and question them. Very well. First, I'd like you to meet my fiancé, Sir Philip Baskerville. Hello, Sir Philip. How do you do, Mr. Holmes? Weren't you once the house detective at the Savoy Ritz? No, that was my brother that used to throw you out. <laughs> He's not there anymore. Oh, goody. And this is Dr. Wilson, our family physician. Good evening, doctor. Can you give us any information about the late Sir Hugo Baskerville? Yes, he was very fond of jello. Hmm. <laughs> uh, make a note of it, Watson. Okay, commercial taken care of. <laughs> very good. And now, Mr. Holmes, may I present Madame Zoraki, the famous psychic. She has supernatural power. Ah, good evening, Madame Zarecki. Good evening, Mr. Holmes. And that's Sir Hugo lying across the table. Oh, the victim. Well, that's the first time I ever saw Sir Hugo on top of a table. <laughs> well, now that I've met everyone, I've got to get to work and solve this case. Hmm, the victim looks as though he met a violent death. Look at the way his clothes are torn and those long scratches on his throat. I didn't do it. I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't do it. I swear it wasn't me. We know it wasn't you, Dr. Watson. Don't be too sure. <laughs> Quiet. Sir Philip. Yes, Mr. Holmes. You inherit a lot of money by Sir Hugo's death. Tell me, where were you at the time of the murder? You can't pin this on me. I've got an ironclad alibi. Oh, you have, eh? Well, just answer my question. 
Where were you at the time of the murder? In Maisie's beauty parlor, and you know it. <laughs> well, somebody committed this crime, and I'm going to find out who it is. Maybe I can help you, Mr. Holmes. Help me? How, Madame Zarecki? Sir Hugo himself will tell me. But Sir Hugo is dead. I know, but I will talk to his spirit in the great beyond. Why, that's impossible. Oh, she's very good. She got South America this morning. <laughs> Why, this is ridiculous. But we'll try it. Now will you all please sit around in a circle and hold hands. Oh, all right. Come on, everybody. Oh, oh I think the whole thing's think sure. Now turn off the lights. Quiet, everybody. Now concentrate. Concentrate on Sir Hugo. <laughs> Sir Hugo. Sir Hugo, are you there? Hmm, this is silly. Sir Hugo, if you are there, answer me. Bosh, it'll never work. Yeah, bosh. Quiet, Watson. Sir Hugo, we are calling you. If you hear my voice, answer me. Answer me. Oh, I hear you, madam. What? Did you hear that, Watson? Yeah. Madam Zarecki, can I speak to him now? Yes. But don't lose the contact. I won't. Sir Hugo, do you hear me? Yes. Then tell me, how were you killed? Well, I was out walking on the moor last night. Yes. And just as I got to the garden wall, I saw a huge fibrocele across me. <laughs> All of a sudden, I sat it for and he grabbed me by the fibrocele across me. <laughs> and I couldn't give myself any more than a oh. But that didn't kill me. It should have. Why? But Sir Hugo... If that didn't kill you, what did? Well, I picked myself up and ran toward the house. Uh -huh. And just as I got there, there was a huge fungus. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he really tried to solve the break. You know that breakfast? Yes. Well, the whole crime was seated, the seated, seated, and there I am on the table. <laughs> but, Sir Hugo, you still haven't told us. Who committed this crime? Who murdered you? Very well. I was killed by... Put in a nickel, please, for five more minutes. Get off the line, operator. <laughs> Continue, Sir Hugo. Your murder must be avenged. I was killed by... Stop! Stop! I can't stand it any longer. I confess I did it. I did it. I killed him. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it all the time. I don't know why I did it. I must have been mad, crazy, delirious. <laughs> Slap the handcuffs on him, Watson. The case of the Baskervilles is solved. Hey, Sherlock, what about me? Oh, my goodness, I forgot all about the hound. I'm sorry, Andy. Play, Phil. The other day I heard a woman say, when I feel like going fancy on desserts, I want to go fancy in a great big way. Well, I hope she's listening, for here's the answer. A grand new dessert called Deluxe Strawberry Loaf. Strawberry Jello. Juicy fruit berries and creamy marshmallows combined in a shimmering mold of jello. And here's the way to make it dissolve one package of strawberry jello in one pint of hot water and chill until cold and syrupy. Then place in a bowl of cracked ice and whip it up with a rotary egg beater until the jello is fluffy and thick like pink whipped cream. Now fold in two cups of sweetened sliced strawberries, six marshmallows finely cut, and one cup of whipped cream. Mold in a loaf pan and take it from me, there is a deluxe dessert. A lovely shimmery loaf of whipped rose pink jello filled with fresh berries and foamy marshmallows. So try it soon. Ask your grocer tomorrow for strawberry jello. This is the last number of the 37th program in the new jello series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And Andy, I'm awfully sorry I overlooked you in our play. I don't know how I ever happened to forget about the hound. Oh, that's all right, Buck. You want to howl now? <laughs> Was that a dog? Sounded like the 515. It sure did. Good night, folks. <laughs> Baker appears on the Jell-O program for courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>